Welcome to Azania BJ Day, and today we're talking to Samir Chantre. Now, this is a man who has done a lot in jiu-jitsu. He's a gym owner, he's a three-time Nogi world champion, and he's also something else. He's a jiu-jitsu athlete manager. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. All right, Samir. So I called called you to talk to you today because I was really interested in what is a jujitsu athlete manager? What is, what is it that you do? So, um, I represent, I basically represent the athlete in all their, uh, administrative matters, right? So, uh, all the business aspect of it. Uh, today, jujitsu is going towards uh, professionalism, right? Uh, there are big purses. There are negotiate negotiation all around with sponsorship, with seminars, with uh, 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 super fights, right? Tournaments, GPs, all that. And the athlete's focus shouldn't be uh, uh, taking care of all that. The athlete's focus should be training should be developing skills should be conditioning should be focused on being an athlete if you see professional sports uh that's what they do if you see in soccer if you see football if you see in any other professional sports uh the athlete has a manager that's going to take care of their career not only uh, uh representing in a way that they're going to be negotiating all day no but also like i have my athletes where they tell me, they ask me, Samir, what do you think? Um, I give my opinion. Since I was a full-time athlete, I was the highest level athlete uh, one day. And I know, um, I know, like, hey, I think this fight, it's important for us. I think this fight, I don't, I don't think we should do this fight. So managing their career too, you know, not only representing them, but also managing and also uh, giving them advices on uh, what route to take, what route not to take. Would you mind sharing the names of the athletes that you manage? So for now, I have Gabriel Souza, I have Fionn Davis, and I have Natiali De Jesus. So those are the athletes that I manage right now. So I started uh, 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 going towards that route last year. Uh, Gabriel actually was the one who kind of made me do it. Uh, he asked me about it uh, before. I, we, we were like in a conversation and then I told him that, yeah, that's something that I wanted to do one day. And then um, th like months later, he said, Samir, man, let's do it. Let's do it. I need you. And then I was like, okay, let's do it. And I wanted in the beginning, I wanted to just, uh, I'm going to be, uh, uh, just going to be managing uh, uh, Gabriel in the beginning, just to make sure uh, uh, I can give a lot of attention for him because I do have other businesses too. Uh, but then Natiali came along and now Fionn not long ago. So uh, I'm slowly growing uh uh that uh, uh that aspect on my uh on my life and i'm enjoying a lot and putting a lot of effort into it too so what does it look like sort of how would you say the process would say for example say who's in number one wants gabrielle to uh compete on one of their events would they mm -hmm. contact him and he would send them to you or would you actively be going out to different competitions and saying hey i've got this amazing athlete super entertaining can you both. Uh, both? Okay. Both. Yes. So, uh, uh, so I'll give an example. I, uh, um, uh, AD, uh, ADXC, they contacted me, uh, directly. Hey, Samir, I know you manage this guy and this guy. Um, uh, um, I would like to have them on the show. Uh, can, are they available? What are the conditions and all that, you know, but there are, shows also that I reach out that are uh, uh, seminars, same, same thing for seminars, for example, I get a lot of messages, hey, I'd like to have Gabriel here. Uh, uh, hey, I'd like to have Fionn here. I'd like to have Nati here, um, Nati Ali. Uh, but also like when I know they're gonna go. So for example, we had uh, Gabriel competing in Kazakhstan. So I told him, hey, let's set up a seminar, a seminar tour in Asia. So we end up having him going to a few different countries in Asia and I was the one setting up all the seminars. I was the one doing also the uh, uh, the schedule. Hey, so you're going to leave this place. You're going to go to this place. Uh, they, they got you a ticket already for this place and I set up everything for him. I set up visas for him and everything. So uh, 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 the whole around uh, uh, in that aspect. Uh, so he, the only, all you need 
all he needs is focus on his training, focus on competition, and whatever he needs to be doing there. You know, like he doesn't need to be um, um, spending time and effort and stressing with all that, uh, 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 all that part, the administrative part. Now you were saying when you were back, you know, competing and you were a full time athlete that maybe this was something that you wish you had in your life. You had a manager who could do these things for you. What were the pain points for you as an athlete uh, that really inspired you to take on this role as a jujitsu manager? A few different, a, a, a few different reasons. I always, uh, as an athlete back in the days, I always wanted to have a manager. One of them is uh, uh, that part that I was just talking about. So uh, before a tournament, for example, I wish I had somebody that said, hey, uh, the, this one, let's wait and let's skip on this one and let's go to that one because I think it's going to be, it's going to be better. You're going to be better on your pick so you can train more so you don't risk injuries and all that. Some advisors too. And also like um, when you're, when you're trying, when somebody like when, a, when a show, for example, reaches out to you, right. And uh, they offer you, Hey, um, I can give you a thousand bucks for you to fight. And immediately I'm not content, you know, but the athlete, he's going to be like, ah, but if I try to raise my price, they might not have you on my show and I need to be there. I really want to be there. So I try, okay, so maybe 50, maybe 1500 or, and then, oh, I don't know. And then you're immediately like, oh, okay, 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 okay. You know what I mean? But when you have somebody to represent you there, first of all, let's be honest. Uh, when a manager is talking to a, to a promoter, the promoter knows uh, okay, it, I'm not talking to an athlete that doesn't know what he's really talking about. I'm talking to somebody that uh, it's educated to be in that position, you know. So uh, 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 I'm also a businessman. I have multiple businesses. Uh, when uh, uh, when I'm talking to a promoter, I'm talking between businessman and businessman. I know what he wants. He knows what I want. You know, so I know he wants to be profitable and I want to show him that he can be profitable. Uh, and this is what he wants to hear. Uh, and of course, I need to deliver, right? My fighter needs to deliver that in order for me to, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, for the person to trust me, right? For next time, for example. Uh, uh, but it was different back in the days. Back in the days as a full-time athlete, I wanted to be in that show. I wanted to fight, you know, the best thing I knew to, how to do was fighting. Fight, I was a fighter, fighting was my thing, you know, so negotiating and going after shows and all that, like it wasn't my main focus, you know, so I would, uh, I would definitely have done way more in my career if I had somebody like me in my career back in the days, you know, and I'll say the same for seminars, like reaching out to academies and trying to, to get like back in the days, uh, I needed seminars to, um, to complement my income. So having to reach out to, to academies and having to try to sell yourself for seminars is also not the best idea. You know, it's not something that you should be doing. Uh, it's sponsorships. Back in the days, I used to think that the sponsor was, it, 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 not that I used to think, but the sponsors would try to make me think that they were making me a favor. So anything that they would offer would be like they, they they're doing me a favor, you know, on paying me that money. But in reality, it's it, it, it's a job. It's it, it, it's it's working. The person is paying you for you to represent that brand and making them profit, making them profitable. And I know how much how much profit I can generate for that for that uh, uh, for that brand. You know, I I know how much I can sell. Nowadays, I I have way more argument. I know. Uh, as a business owner, uh, uh, I know what generates income to the business. So I can, uh, on that same level, talk to a business owner and say, hey, my athlete can generate this, 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 and this and that because of his reach, because of his marketing, because of his sales. Uh, and look at his past campaigns, look at this, look at that. I can show the brand that he's worth that, uh, 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 that value that he's gonna be investing, you know? so. I wish, of course, I knew all that as an athlete, but at the same time, uh, I wish I had somebody that would do that for me because I didn't need to spend timing, to spend time with that, stress with that, 
or even uh, uh, be in that position, you know, where you, you know, like the, 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 the good guy, the good cop and the bad cop, you know, like there's somebody that needs to be doing that for you, you know, for mm -hmm. you, your job is to go there and, uh, uh, and put on a show and deliver what your manager is telling uh, uh, that promoter or that brand or that company that you're going to go there and deliver. I think you hit on kind of an interesting point there about sort of athletes knowing their worth. And sometimes it can be easier for other people to have that outside perspective and be able to look at you and be like, oh yeah, you're good at this and this and this, but you, the person can't see it. Can you, yeah. can you speak to that? Or do you feel that people in jujitsu understand like what their value is as an athlete, what they can bring to brands or do they need that, that manager, that cheerleader to come in and say, Hey, like, you know, you can actually do this. Yes. And, uh, um, it, it goes both ways too. Okay. Um, uh, it goes both ways because, uh, some athletes still don't understand what sells and what doesn't sell. Some athletes still think that a gold medal will get them everything they think they want, you know, and unfortunately that's not the case. Uh, but at the same time, uh, athletes that don't have the gold medal, that medal are delivering a lot in other ways, in performance, in marketing, in entertainment. And when that gold medal comes, the athlete is 100% complete, you know? So, uh, uh, um, looking from outside, uh, sometimes that person that doesn't have that gold medal doesn't think he's worth it that much. But looking from outside and uh, um, not only the, not on, like, the manager can see that, you know, uh, sometimes the athlete sees it too. Of course, like I said, it all it, it depends a lot on the athlete, uh, but the manager can tell him, hey, that gold medal that you that you're missing, that you think you're not worth it because of that, you are selling way more than a lot of people that have gold medals. And I tell, and I tell that this is something that I found out a long time ago when I was still a full-time athlete. Uh, there was that there were athletes that you can see even uh, uh, back in the days. I would see I would see that on my followings. Uh, there uh, we had people that was more accomplished than I was that wouldn't have the same following or the same reach that I had, the same recognition, wouldn't be the cover of the magazine, wouldn't get what I got. Uh, and then eventually I caught up in, in, in many other things too, including titles and all. But uh, when I first, when I was an epic coming, I was already hyped up in many different ways that I saw people n not being, you know, because I would, put a lot of effort in trying to market myself in many different ways. Okay. So that adds value. So I would be invited to different fights that other people wouldn't, you know? So those are also the things that I bring to today to be in my, uh, uh, to, to help the athletes to be, uh, uh, in this career, you know, like, so nowadays I can, I see a lot of things that, uh, athletes don't see because I started seeing that a long time ago, and now it's what I do. I, I, I made that become basically one of my jobs. So uh, seeing the athletes, seeing what they can expose, what they can sell, how much they can sell uh, uh, and make them get a, 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 a fair purse or a fair uh, a payment, a sponsorship and all that, you know, of course, I'm not also going to tell him, hey, now you worked a hundred thousand dollars, and the guy does one post every month. You know, I'm not gonna try to uh, like. It, it's part of my job also to be honest with my athlete. Hey, you need to do this. Hey, you need to do that. Hey, let's move this. Like all the athletes when I when they first started with me, I was like, okay, so let me take a look on your Instagram. Hey, let's do this. Let's do that. Uh, let's change this, let's change that. Hey, uh, I was just talking to one of my athletes. Hey, uh, we're going to do this post here. I just literally sent him a message. Uh, we're going to announce the super fight today. And I told him, hey, uh, let's get to a video maker. Let's make a, a post that's going to be this, 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 and that. You know, like, because this is what I told the promoter. I told the promoter that he was going to be profitable with that match, you know. So, and I know how much my athlete is capable of delivering that. 
So I told my athletes this, and next time, and he knows, like, he, he knows he's capable of doing all that. He knows he's capable of sale, uh, or selling, you know? So we know how much we can get him, how much we can raise those purses. Mm -hmm. That I like how you bring in the perspective of, like, say, the sponsor of the promotion of that. The fact, at the end of the day, they need to make money, too. It and is. It is. Sometimes it feels like, how would you say, that, that people think that, oh, because I've won, you know, four gold medals at Pans and Worlds, that, like, I deserve to have this amount of money. And then they get upset uh, when they don't get it. But the reality is, what are you doing to sell for your sponsor? Exactly. What are you doing to get people in the door at that promotion? What are you doing to sell tickets, to sell pay-per-views, right? I'll never forget, uh, I was still a brown belt and I was talking to uh, one of my sponsors and I'll never forget this. This this happened uh, 16, year, 16 years ago and uh, he told me, hey, I'm going to I'm going to raise your salary. But you have to know one thing. Gold medals. Don't put food on my on my daughter's table. He told me that and I never forgot. Uh, of course, the gold medal will help because we'll bring more uh, uh, rich, right? More people are going to be there uh, in your Instagram, for example. But people on your Instagram won't matter anything if you're not posting. Won't matter anything because uh, if, especially nowadays, like uh, the, algorithm, the, it won't, the algorithm won't deliver if you don't constantly post. Right, it's not one post every month. It's not gonna reach all your followers, even though you have a good amount of followers. So uh, uh, it's a it's a simple math. It's a simple math. It's a return on investment. The business is going to invest money on you as long as they have return, or as long as they can see a potential return. They might fail, like many businesses, they fail in one operation or two or they go bankrupt, of course, but uh, they want to minimize the risk as much as possible. So they're going to go with who they think they're going to uh, be able to get that return of investment. And it's fair. And it's fair. It's the same for us. It's the same for athletes. Uh, the athlete, let's, why, why the athlete's not content for a thousand bucks? Because a thousand bucks won't even pay for what they're going to be giving up on seminars or classes or the supplements they're going to be taking the healthier food the diet the conditioning training they're paying the uh, uh the nutritionist they're paying you know so it's not worth it, it it's not going to be worth the investment that they're going to be putting there you know it, uh, but of course not everyone sees that way and that's why there are athletes fighting for a thousand bucks for 500 bucks because uh, uh, they don't see that way and they don't have somebody like uh, uh, somebody to advise them on, hey, this is not worth it. It's like uh, uh, somebody's going to delivery deliver something to make 10 bucks, but they're going to spend 15 bucks in, in gas, you know. So it's just the, the simple math. It doesn't add up. You know, it doesn't it doesn't add up. Yeah, it sounds like you really provide like a long term strategy for the careers of athletes rather than just thinking, oh, next job, next job, next tournament, next tournament, next show, next tournament. It's like, let's have a whole encompassing strategy and like, let's like take maybe your goal of where you want to be and reverse engineer it. Absolutely. I absolutely uh, do that. In fact, uh, yesterday I had a meeting with one of my athletes and uh, uh, we were talking about retirement. We were talking about uh, 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 opening businesses start down the road, so and a uh, uh, different strategy on how to beat uh, how to beat inflation, uh, 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 what what compound interest is and all that, you know, and how he can generate more money with the money that he, uh, that he's getting right now. Uh, and I know, like, I know for a fact I've been there. You know, I was a 20 year old competing in Hungary and only looking on today. And then as I, as I started getting older, uh, I always had a very, I was I was always very educated about it, something that I always liked it. Um, comes 
from my family. Uh, uh, but I study a lot. I study a lot of uh, a lot of different strategies for investments for businesses. Uh, Today, for example, I have multiple businesses. I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an investor, investing businesses too. So I'm able to provide that to my uh, uh, to my athletes too. You know where uh, uh, where they're going to be able to uh, not only generate their income but also multiply and also thinking ahead because. Uh, when they are when they are older, like I was even I was even joking to Gabriel, I was like, hey, or unless you want to be sixty five year old doing super fights, you know, and uh, so it, it, it of course that that doesn't happen. So uh, we want to we want to be thinking about our future, right? We want to be uh, uh, um, because the future is there. The future is gonna get here, want it or not, preparing for it or not. You know, so I might as well prepare for it. And when we get there, we know uh, 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 we are able to have a good life too. To have a life after competing. Yeah. Yes. You don't just yes. like drop dead at 30. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. I I'm wondering, like, say you have a competitor, maybe they're a brown belt, maybe they're a new black belt. They're kind of up and coming they're winning stuff. They're not quite at like the top, top level. They're not like a Fion yet, but they're in and around. What are some strategies that you would recommend that they take that they could do today to sort of build up their career, actually start making a living off of competing or like incorporating teaching, just making money out of jujitsu so that they continue to do the thing that they love. Beauty and audience beauty and audience is very important and uh, 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 deliver to the audience okay not only in terms of marketing but in terms of results too of course uh, you have to, you have to put effort in your career you have to put effort in your career or around okay so you have to be good in jiu-jitsu of course uh, 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 this is this is a priority this is a number one priority uh, so you have to put fo fo focus on your training, you have to bring results, but at the same time, you have to deliver, you have to uh, market those results, okay? So, uh, and thinking about long-term strategy. What's your goal? I want to I wanna win ADCC. Okay, so we're going to work towards that goal. Uh, I want to I wanna go uh, IBJF Hall of Fame. I want to win... IBJF Worlds at least four times. Okay, so we're gonna work towards that goal. Okay, and we're gonna start building your audience towards those people, or towards the people that uh, uh, are gonna be. Uh, we're gonna try to get super fights in that um, uh, in that niche. Okay, so more like a, more as a gi fighter. We're going to get sponsorships that. Uh, I had sm I, I I spoke to brands before that oh Samir I kind of like more than athletes that focus more on gi oh Samir no I want him representing more because I want him to represent me a lot because man like uh, uh, his gi his no gi it's amazing and this and that you know so everything we can we can lean towards his long term goals okay so uh, uh, building an audience is very important deliver to the audience is very important and focus on your training focus on uh, uh, uh developing skills focus on those uh, uh, those aspects of their career and then we market that towards the appropriate niche and that's what's going to bring the result when you're talking about building an audience and delivering to your audience for me the probably i think the best example of that right now in jiu-jitsu is the b team like it's very interesting how not i mean they're amazing grapplers amazing <laughs> competitors but none of them have won adcc they're all silver medalists <laughs> yet they've been able to build like this fanatical fan base where people are like buying their their rash guards like their soccer kits and like wearing them at the gym like from all over the world it's like the b team is your new soccer team basically can I give you can I give you other examples too? Yeah, please. Tan Planet. You can see you can see that guys from Tan Planet from a mile away. You know, like and now another example is being uh, AOJ. Yeah. 
like they are they they have a branding they uh, they already and of course uh, not not comparing them in terms of achievements uh, uh, but in terms of branding in terms of like uh, 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 they have an audience you know uh, uh, the, uh, 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 ten planet they have their own audience uh, BTM Danahar they have their audience you know so uh, uh, um, it, it, it they're doing really well on that on get they got a niche they oh we are no gi grapplers this is what we do this is how we dress and all that and we're gonna sell to that audience same thing happened to Eddie Bravo long time ago hey these are th this is my academy this is my team this is how we dress up this is how we uh, uh, like we we use belts without uh, uh, gi and all that and they have that niche and it it's you unlikely you're gonna see them crossing paths like maybe have happened before but just it's hard to see like a guy from ten planets going to AOJ or vice versa you know like it, it, it they have their own niche they have their own niche and you can pick your niche in the beginning of her career otherwise you're going to be lost like or down the road you're going to be trying to 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 switch it you know which is you're going to start a whole new audience so it's definitely it, it's it's definitely more challenging than if in the beginning of your career you it's uh, it's never too late to go to the right path for you of course but uh if you're the earlier you do that the better it's going to be for yourself, you know, the better it's going to be for your career, more likely you're going to have a bigger audience down the road. And if you can identify what your niche is, you can always get a manager. Exactly. You can help you. You can, exactly. <laughs> exactly. If you don't have a lot, no, there are athletes like I sp I've spoken to many athletes before, like, oh, what is your goal? What? I don't know. I want to fight, you know, like okay, so where do you want to go? Like you think about you think about opening your own gym. Uh, I don't know, but so what you're gonna do like when when 30 comes when 35 comes, uh, I think I'll be doing masters. Yeah, but <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's let's keep talking. Let's keep talking. You know, so uh, uh, having somebody to try to to bring you clarity. You know, to bring you clarity to advise you on that. And and I'll tell you like not to brag, but somebody that have been there. As a 20 year old, as a 20 year old uh, black belt, 21, 22, 23, and then have, uh, 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 and then as retiring, uh, uh, I was able to monetize everything I've done in my career, you know, and I feel that now fighters have way more in their hands because Jiu Jitsu now, it's not what Jiu Jitsu was 15 years ago for me. Uh, when I was 20, I, I like to tell that I, I like to talk about that story because um, uh, people need to know. Like, thankfully, I was able to monetize and be in a uh, in a good spot today. But when I won my first Nogi Worlds as a black belt, I made $200 in uh, sponsorship. You know, like it was my prize. Hey, $200 prize because you want Worlds. Years later, I was making. Uh, a few years later, I was making, uh, yeah, a few years later, I was making five times that monthly. Uh, and then on and on and on. So now, uh, uh, and before when I was first invited to a super fight to make $2,000 back in 2012, for me, that was like, whoa, you know? So people need to understand jujitsu wasn't jujitsu wasn't uh, uh, before what it is today, you know. So they have we have an expression in Portuguese that we say um, fighters now have the knife and the cheese in their hands, you know. We use that expression in Portuguese. The fighters now have their knife and the cheese in their hands. They need to make it work, you know. They need to get help. They need to. Uh, be able to monetize their career because everything is there for them. All they need is to cut the cheese, you know, like all they need is to uh, uh, 
be able to to go because there's way more money in jiu-jitsu now there's way more exposure in jiu-jitsu now there's way more media in jiu-jitsu now jiu-jitsu is finally breaking through some some barriers that it was forever locking our 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 sport in a bubble you know we're finally popping those bubbles little by little jiu-jitsu is in the ufc jiu-jitsu is in the one fc jiu-jitsu is it's uh everywhere you know it's it's going through the mainstream now you know so uh, uh they they need to take advantage of that and then be able to uh, uh use that for to build wealth for their future mm-hmm it's interesting you're talking about how jiu-jitsu is breaking out it's going more mainstream one of the things i noticed was fion now has a sponsorship for uh i want to say i'm not i'm not an alcohol drinker but she has like a sponsorship with a like an average yes yeah with a beer Uh company which i feel like is not something you would have seen five years ago you were kind of limited to your kimono company you know maybe you have like a a health company or a float tank company and Mm -hmm. That was it. Yeah. No, absolutely. Because, and, and why is that? Because the, it, it's the power of uh, uh, marketing. It's your audience. When you see IBJJF with 900,000 followers, when you see how many followers uh, 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 other media has, you know, so there, are, uh, there, there is power in, uh, in that marketing. You know, there's power. In, if you see Fionn's post, Fionn's has she has ridiculous reach her audience is very loyal she has but look at her like she has her style she has her personality she like she is very she 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 sells herself very well in a way in a very organic way you know so she has a really loyal really good audience so uh, um it's in, it's very interesting for the brands to point it up with her, you know, because uh, uh, oh, but she's ju- she's a jujitsu she's a jujitsu girl. No, she's a she she's a girl with a big audience. It doesn't matter uh, if it's a, if it's her niece to jujitsu or not. Like everyone drinks beer, you know. So uh, not everyone, but uh, in every niche we have people that drink beer. Let's put it this way, better. Okay, so in uh, in every niche, people drink beer. In every niche, be, uh, people wear, let's say, Adidas or uh, Reebok or and why those Nike and why those brands are not in Jiu-Jitsu yet? You know, like there is possibility for them to come. And I think uh, uh, Reebok just is, just started sponsor one of the athletes, but uh, uh, which also like it's something that we would be be dreaming of ten years ago. You know, so. Uh, uh, I do believe because the because of the uh, because of the reach we've been having more with jujitsu because of the audience because of how popular it's becoming and I still think we are just crawling you know uh, we're just crawling still and a little bit we're gonna be walking a little bit we're gonna be running um, even on my Instagram I just I, I made a I made a post not long ago I'm a, I'm a huge Flamengo fan uh, uh, um, for soccer right my soccer team. And I traveled the world to watch my soccer team. And I was wondering, like, I, I made a post about that. I was wondering, hey, when, uh, when does an athlete jiu-jitsu, when does, I'm sorry, an, an average jiu-jitsu practitioner are going to start traveling to see their favorite fighter compete? You know, are going to start traveling to see their favorite show, you know, to go to, to uh, like, I do that myself, yes, but I work with that. It's, I, it's in me. It's, I've, been, I've been in jiu-jitsu for over 25 years. So it's in me. Uh, but when, when it start when that's going to start to happen, I think, I, I think it's going to be soon. You can see the result of ADCC millions in sales in a couple hours, like five years ago, have you seen the old pictures of ADCC or have you been to one, two terrible, ugly mats and 50 people on the, on the, uh, uh on the audience, you know, the, the, uh like of course it grew in popularity and the growing popularity brings 
uh, 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 audience. More people are competing, more people watch it, and so on and on and on. And I think Jiu-Jitsu is going to get to that level. You know, like I was talking to uh, one of the promoter, one of promoter, one of promoters uh, uh, who's number one, and, he, and I was like, man, man, like we need to fill up not only sell pay-per-view, but we need to start filling up those uh, those events. You know, and he was like, man, like who's number one? We had over a thousand people it's like well that's cool i was there i think one of the last ones i was there uh because i had uh natiali winning the belt i had uh, um uh gabriel uh in the finals there with amazing match with uh, uh baby shark so uh we had like it, it was a nice atmosphere and all like so we need people to start going to those events too, you know, because that's going to generate more revenue. That's going to move more money. People are going to see that. The, uh, people are going to want to sponsor the events. The events will have more revenue to pay the athletes and everyone is happy, you know. Do you, do you see the future of jiu-jitsu going mainstream sort of in the way that we say, we see like say the Premier League or the NFL or the NBA? Like there'll maybe be like a cost... A consolidation into maybe like a few events and then maybe even like people are competing to have athletes on their team like atos is going to buy the contract out of an athlete on aoj so they can represent atos that kind of stuff do you see it going there or do you envision a different future i don't i don't see it going as popular as nfl or fifa like that because uh, it's a fighting sport. It's still a fighting sport, right? Even in UFC, which is probably like what we can name the most as fighting sport, the, the biggest fighting sport uh, 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 event, right? Uh, it's not in that level, but if Jiu-Jitsu can get to UFC level, I'll be already super happy, right? And it's been a while already that there are those uh team teams hiring athletes but not in the proportion that i want to see i want to see athletes that i represent being offered for example a hundred thousand dollars for their transfer to another team you know i want something like that to happen i see something like that happening but there's one thing that i feel that we need first I feel that we need uh, for the teams to get paid once they win tournaments. So, for example, I don't know. I, I don't know if it was Atos, Dream Art, or Alliance. I know they were uh, at the top of last year's Worlds. I don't really know which one won. I don't remember uh, exactly. But if they won fifty thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollars, whatever, to if they if they earn that to to win worlds it's gonna be interesting for them to say hey uh hey fion hey gabriel hey uh nati would you like to uh, transfer come compete for this particular team to my team and i'll give you uh, fifty thousand dollar for a three-year contract I'm just throwing numbers out there okay uh, um that I think if that happening, if, if that when, because investing investing that much in athletes nowadays, just for the sake of when, just to say they won, doesn't generate as much revenue. And just the same thing that we were talking about the promotions, right? Uh, the team are gonna be seen as a business. Uh, what today? What today? We we can see we can see some of the uh, uh, some of the teams uh, uh, doing that, but not paying that transfer fee what's happening is hey i can offer you uh this amount of money per month or i can offer you uh conditioning trainer nutritionist uh lodging and training in my academy and i'll i'll pay for your travel to worlds and pans and europeans this has been happening for the past few years but the transfer fee and all that, all the negotiation and all, I think we're still missing a few uh, points in order for that to happen. And I think it's gonna happen. I, I'm very confident that's gonna happen, but I think we're still missing a couple of things. 
and this is gonna happen when uh, the ad when the adipore is starts to m to make money with those wins because if they're not making money just literally just throwing money away by doing something like that it's not worth it unless it's something like no it's my dream to have this guy competing under my name okay which um, we don't see that happening uh, nowadays you know so I think once those points fill out I think we're gonna we're gonna we're going to see that and I don't I don't know if it's gonna take that much longer honestly it, it, we're in a weird spot right now with jiu-jitsu in that it's exploded rapidly uh, but it you know up until a few years ago it was still pretty much a totally amateur sport where people were paying to compete they were paying to go to worlds right whereas in other sports right you would never say to say manchester united please paid play in the premier league right mm -hmm. it's the other way around right how do you see that transition in happening do you think you know is a new organization organization going to pop up is there going to be a new type of like competition format that's going to happen where instead of athletes paying out their pocket to show up and represent another promotion instead they're going to be you know invited that teams are going to start making money do you have an idea of how that would happen or so i think it's already happening in a way that um uh abjgf for example they already have the, the academy ranking they already have the athlete ranking they pay for they pay the black belts i believe 20 grand at the end of the year uh if they win the ranking right uh abu dhabi world pro they do the same thing and i believe they pay the association abu dhabi i believe they pay the association i'm not 100 sure okay but i believe they do but they do they do pay the athletes the ranking per weight class which is super nice they play they pay per age group too they pay uh uh adults they pay masters they pay other belts too for the ranking so abjf is also going towards that before back in the days that wasn't even ranking at all so now they're tracking the ranking they're giving plats for the ranking uh they're giving money for the ranking i know the academy they give plats i, I don't think they're giving uh 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 money for the academy yet um i'm sorry if i'm wrong but i don't think so uh and there are the other the other events where like the professional events right so i think it's going to be an evolution that is already happening it's just it's just not doable to do everything at once so i believe they're going it's a process i believe uh like they're making money already um they're paying money for nationals abjf for example okay then pay money for nationals in black about division they're paying money also mere it's not a lot of money i saw that other day a post oh paying uh seven thousand dollars for a world ch or nine thousand dollars for a world champion this is ridiculous it's a disrespect i was like man like i competed my whole life that was no prize money you know like what you get from that tournament is that uh the recognition it's our job to be able to monetize that gold medal it's the same thing that we were talking about earlier the gold medal itself in that exact same day it's not gonna give you money yes but now they do a little bit yes but now it's your job to monetize that gold medal that gold medal can be worth way more than if it was actual gold you know like that gold medal can be worth a lot of money if you know how to monetize it not a lot of not all the athletes know how to do it and that's when you have somebody that's gonna advise you on that somebody's gonna help sell you somebody's just going to put you in shows where you're gonna be able to make that kind of money you know more than you can ever think uh but the organizations are already going towards that uh, um, that direction in my in, in my opinion so i don't think we we'll need to another event to come and say hey uh now we're paying no i think uh we are already towards uh that once 
the federations see that this is their next step you know like uh, i think uh, i think that's something that's gonna happen sooner or later honestly uh we gotta even start a hashtag or something so we can <laughs> make that happen <laughs> well it is like going for all circle again it's like if you're an athlete you can build an audience and then say hey i'm gonna go pe compete at worlds come support me and then you get like i don't know because of that, you have a hundred super fans who then go buy the tickets to go watch you compete at Worlds or whatever competition it is. All of a sudden, that gold medal is worth like a hundred tickets more because you brought those people in to see you compete, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than, again, just your average, you know, Worlds where the only people in the audience are other competitors and parents, right? Mm -hmm. how, how can you get fans off their butts, off their couches? and into the stadiums and paying for pay-per-views. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a matter of uh, uh, being entertaining. The, in the, uh, uh, for the athlete, you gotta be entertaining, you gotta make that, you gotta make it worth it. Um, I'll, I can give you many examples of uh, uh, athletes that I know that bring a lot, that generate a lot of uh, uh, revenue for the events. And, uh, IBJJF, for example, <laughs> I'm one of the IBJJF's biggest fan. Okay, people, some people hate me for that. Uh, but because oh no, they just want your money, or no, they charge a lot of money for this. They charge money for that. But yes, but if it wasn't for them, probably none of us would be here. You know, like I certainly wouldn't be here in my position today uh because they charge a lot of money they get a lot of money yeah but they also invest a lot of money they lose money in tournaments because uh, i remember when i came here there was only three tournaments in america now we have three tournaments per weekend you know so it required an investment for that and uh as much as i said like they cannot do everything at, uh, uh, at once right so it's the same thing for them so i believe but i also believe that they started seeing that they were losing their best athletes for professional events. I'll give you an example. Um, I I shouldn't even say, be saying here, but uh, I advise one of my athletes not to do Worlds because we have an event so close that at this point of their career, Winning Worlds is not going to change anything, but those events are the ones changing uh, their career now. I would say differently for other for other athletes. Okay, so it, uh, what I do, the work that I do, it's very specific. I'll be, hey, for your career, for your plans, for the goals that we have set for your career, this year, 2024, I don't think it's worth it for you to do Gi Worlds. As much as I feel, I think it's the most amazing tournament in the world. I love going there. It was the tournament that even with 20 years into my career, I could not get rid of the butterflies. Uh, I, I still think, hey, it's not interesting now to do that. So, Abhijaf is seeing that too. You know that some some of the athletes are uh, uh, shifting to professional events, and the the uh, uh, the uh, so now they are also doing professional events. They have the Abhijaf GPs, they have super fight and the GPs and all that. So of course they're still crawling too. Okay, they're still crawling. Uh, uh, great purses, don't give me it wrong, you know, in some of the events, yes, but uh, uh, I think they're leaning towards that too, you know, I think they're leaning towards that because they see, hey, I want the athlete in our card because that athlete brings revenue not only for uh, uh, what else, but also bring revenue for the GPs, you know, so of course, uh, IBJF wants Marigali to be in their card. Abhijaf wants Marigali to be in the uh, at Worlds. 
Do you think MJDF was happy when Murugali announced, hey, I'm not doing Gi anymore? I'm fully merging to Nogi? Of course not. You know, not only MJDF, their sponsors. That uh, uh, that little play that's in there saying the name and the brand, uh, Matt side, they also got pissed because Murugali is not competing in the finals of the Worlds because that guy brings so much ice. You know, like, Mergali's on the map, people want to watch it. Even if it's to, to cheer for him to lose, you know, like some people don't like the guy, you know, and they, 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 they're going to want him to lose. They're going to be there watching a paint ticket to see him lose, you know. Others, big fans. I, I love seeing him competing. Guys entertaining, super good, and live off of his words, you know, like, He's going to bring attention. He's going to bring eyes. So uh, IBJF sees that. And hey, why not fly that guy to Orlds, give him first class, put him in a nice hotel. He's the re he's a reigning uh, ranging champion. Uh, uh, why not the current absolute champion? Next year, IBJF could pay for their ticket, their first class, nice hotel and now for him to defend his title everyone wants to see the the the, the uh uh the champion back in the game you know and then the champion is not there you know what i mean so i think those things uh, um more and more we'll see uh organizations investing so they can have athletes in their in their cards because they know nowadays we uh, the, some athletes, of course, can generate that revenue back in many different ways. And one of them is toward, uh, through their reach. You know, it's through their audience, it's through their social media, it's, it's uh, uh, um, how, how entertaining they are fighting and all that, you know. So, like I said, I think it's a matter of time. I think little by little, things are changing. Uh, and I'm, I'm very excited for the future of Jiu-Jitsu, so I'll tell you that. Yeah, no, it's an exciting time to be in. And Marigali is a great example of what you're talking about, strategy and taking your career in your own hands. Because he easily could have just stayed in the gi, just kept doing worlds and worlds and worlds over again. But instead, he made a strategic choice to uproot, like, basically everything he knew and go into another domain. And now he's bigger than he ever was, you know? Because, because now he reached a different audience, too. Exactly he has both audiences now uh he was he had a big uh gi comp, uh, a sport jiu-jitsu brazilian brazilian yeah. and then him and then he moved to america to a very american state of texas went to one of the biggest uh and in terms of recognition probably the most popular American uh, no gi jiu jitsu academies and instructor, which is John Danahar, and training alongside with the biggest no gi grappler we probably ever had, uh, uh, Gordon Ryan. So he was very smart on his move in every single way. And now he has, I'll say, the both of the uh, uh the best of both worlds you know let's put it this way uh so now he has the audience for new gi the audience for the adcc people the audience for that niche and he still kept the audience for this niche and once in a while he puts a gi on go there put on a show and then comes back to no gi so he keeps that legacy alive too you know like uh if you think if you start thinking little by little what Marigali is doing, you, you'll be blown away for how smart he's doing his moves. Yeah, no, he's made some incredible moves. I will say at first I doubted him, but now watching him and seeing what he's become, he's right on the money. Yeah, he knows he's super he's yeah absolutely. He's super talented in terms of jiu-jitsu, it's no question. But uh, it's it, it's been it's been pretty impressive on what he's doing with his career and how he's how he's uh, uh, building up his career and the cherry of the pie might be ADCC this year. 
Equinos. No, for sure. Uh, before we finish up, Samir, I wanted to ask you one kind of final question. And that is, is there anything in the jujitsu world that you think isn't being talked about, but should be talked about? Oh, that's a hard question. That's Something you think is being question. undervalued right now by the jujitsu community and you can see in the future being a big game changer. I honestly think, uh, and probably when we uh, turn off, I'm going to think about 500 other things, right? But uh, just because it's fresh in my mind and I was thinking about that, you know, and we spoke about that too. I think uh, academies and associations need to be uh, uh, paid for uh, for for winning tournaments, for having the athletes, because that's going to come back to the athletes. Uh, and I'll tell you that by uh, uh, experience with with our, uh, with Aries, uh, we sponsor athletes, uh, we help uh, uh, our athletes in social projects and all that. When uh, uh, I think it's going to be a game changer when uh, academies and associations start getting start being compensated for when they win it when they win tournaments, for example, because uh, with that they can reinvest in the athletes and then this can start happening. The profession the the professionalism of jujitsu can start growing more and more. I believe uh, the 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 academies will be able to. Uh, spend money on the athletes, on the social projects, and all to bring those athletes and help in their careers so they can come up because the money is not on the kids in, uh, yet. Okay, who who's going to be able to help the kids to become the professional athletes? It's going to be it's going to be the social projects, and where do they take the money from? Uh, once the once the associations and academies are able to invest. I think the money is going to go towards the kids. I think the money is going to go towards the, the upper coming athletes, the juvenile, the good juvenile blue, uh, uh, the kids, that those phenomenal orange belt, uh, uh, green belt kids that we see all the time, highlights all over the internet. Uh, I know a lot of kids that would benefit a lot from it, from an incentive, from a help, from, hey, uh, all you need to do, go to school or homeschool, whatever you need, and train because – we have a lodging for all of you. We all meals are paid for, but in order for that, today we need investors to do that. Once the academies are able to generate revenue, or the associations are able to generate revenue from wins from tournaments to apply to those uh, uh, to those projects, I think more and more we will see uh, those kids being. Uh, uh, taken care of so they can so we can give them uh, opportunity and we see that in all professional sports I'll tell like I said I'm very into soccer I'll be, I've been all my life uh, when you were a kid and you were in a, and you get into a, uh, a soccer team they're gonna be they're gonna be helping they're gonna be helping you even though like then you're not going to make millions of dollars, you're not going to make a lot of money. You're going to make some money because they know that you're going to be an asset for them in the future too. You know, so they're helping, they're helping an athlete. So of course, it's very different in a sport as big as soccer, but in jujitsu, every, if every academy can generate that revenue, if every uh, association can generate that revenue, look how many kids will be able to help and how many kids will have opportunities that today we don't have. You know, so a lot of kids don't make it all the way to juvenile or to adult or to black belt for the lack of opportunity, you know, for because they have to work in a full time job uh, at when they when they become eligible for it and they're not able to train to train uh, uh, as much as they should be, you know, or they simply cannot afford to be in the gym all day. They cannot afford transportation. They cannot afford uh, um the healthy meal they cannot afford many other things so i think this is something that like i said it's fresh in my mind i've been thinking about that lately so this is one of the things that that uh like i said i'll probably remember other things but since it's fresh in my mind and i think uh people should 
talk and hear more about it. I don't think it's something that people think about it too much. Uh, and I think, but I think that could be a game changer in Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. Those are some great points. Uh, when we finish up, where can people reach you? Are you interested in like maybe athletes contacting you about management or are you applications closed on that? So, um, uh, I get, I, I get a lot of messages all the time. Um, like I said, I started, I started with Gabriel and mo moved on to Natiali and now we're close to Fiona long ago. So, uh, I like to space out a lot. So, because I can make sure like, Hey, uh, when I had, when I had on Gabriel, I wanted to make sure I was doing a great job with him. When I had Gabriel and Natiali, I wanted to make sure I was doing a great job with both of them. Now I have Fiona, I gotta make sure I'm I'm able to do a great job with, with all three of them. So I can move on and add more people. I just hired uh, uh, I just hired somebody for my team. So now I have a person that's going to, that that it's uh, uh, that has one job there. Hey, uh, she's doing this. Now I can focus on this, and I'm looking already to hire more people so I can start expanding. Uh, when I see when I see myself in the future with more athletes, which I do, but I also see myself with a team of people helping me doing other jobs, uh, uh, sub, uh, like in subdivision of that uh, of that management uh, uh, company, uh, like. I revise contracts every day. I I talk to, I talk to promoters every day, but on top of that, I also like I said, I also had other, uh, other businesses too. So, and this is the part of the job that I like the most: the contracts, the um, uh, the promoters, talking to them, negotiating, make sure everything is going accordingly, make sure everything is good, make sure it's good with my athletes, talking about their future and all, you know. So, and there are, but there are a lot more into that that uh, I need other people to do for me in order for me to expand, you know, because in, I'm still doing a lot of that. So, uh, when I'm able to fulfill those parts and I feel like, hey, I'm doing a great job with them. It, I manage the time good. Everything is good. I can bring I can bring in more athletes, and this is definitely something that I see uh, happening down the road for sure. Mm -hmm. But as far as uh, where people reach me, um, I'm very active on Instagram, uh, Samir Chantre, um, right there. <laughs> uh, you can follow me there, and uh, I talk a lot. Of, like a lot of what we talked, uh, what we spoke today, I talk there. So. I mean, very active, talking about uh, uh, what it's like to have somebody representing you, what it's like to, um, what you need to do in order to uh, uh, succeed as an athlete, succeed in your career, uh, how you can monetize uh, that gold medal, how you can monetize your career, what do you do in order to be invited for super fights. What do you do in order to uh, uh, raise your purse? What do you do in order to be attractive for promoters, for companies, for seminars? So all that I talk about in my Instagram, I think all that it's very important for you up and coming or for you established athletes too that don't feel like you're generating as much money as you could or as much money as you want it. So those are very important tips that I'll definitely be uh, uh, talking about on Instagram, just like I, I uh, uh, said today, I'm constantly talking and uh, uh, um, and helping on my Instagram too. No, thank you, Samir. I feel with people like you in the sport of Jiu Jitsu, the sky's the limit. You know, the pie's only gonna get bigger, more and more athletes are only gonna make more money. There's gonna be more entertainment for fans. The sport's just gonna grow, grow, grow. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, and yeah, and I think it's, uh, it's a matter of, getting out of the uh, uh, of that little bubble, you know, like if you see how my athletes are announcing fights, how we are trying to to do things differently, you know, like so you have to do things different if you in order to get different results. That's that's pretty much what it is. You know, if you do what every, everybody else is doing, you're just going to be you're just going to be just like everybody else. Yeah, great. Thank you.
Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.